Hello everyone and welcome to this seventh video dedicated to the initial distillation of crude oil. We have already seen together the characteristics of crudes, the desulging, the pride train and finally the overall material balance of the column. We have also detailed how to recover calories in the column via the bottom pump around. We have also selected the duty amount to be removed with this pump around. It is now time to see how to adjust the amount of heat removed thanks to the top pump around. As a reminder, we have removed 20 gigacalories per hour thanks to the bottom pump around. This led to a significant decrease in the reflux as well as the top condenser duty. But this has not been without consequences in the quality of products since we have lost about 1.7 degrees C on the flash point of kerosene. Let's now focus on the top pump around. Typically, it is installed similarly to the bottom pump around, but this time on the kerosene cut. In our case, we will withdraw unstripped kerosene from the tray 7 and we will re-inject the colder liquid several trays above. Let's start by removing 5 gigacalories per hour. Same consequences as for the bottom pump around, the liquid flows above the pump around zone are reduced as the duty removed from the condenser. We observe a reduction from 49 to 44 gigacalories per hour, it means precisely the 5 gigacalories per hour just removed, and the reflux is also reduced from 207 to 169 tons per hour. But what are the properties affected when removing 5 gigacalories per hour with the tom pump around? Well, we will reduce the separation efficiency between naphtha and kerosene, so the flash point of kerosene will logically decrease. It drops by 1 degree C, but freezing point of kerosene is unchanged as well as the properties of diesel since these cuts are below the top pump around. Let's now continue to remove calories and this time let's target 13 gigacalories per hour. We always see the same consequences. The kerosene flash point is further reduced by 1 degree C and the reflux by 60 tons an hour. And the duty removed in the condenser is lowered by 8 gigacalories per hour. Let's increase this amount of energy further to 27 gigacalories per hour. At this value, we dry out the trays of the top zone. We know that we have reached our maximum. As for the bottom pump around, it is necessary to choose a quantity of energy to be extracted and in our case, we will choose 50% of the maximum possible removable duty. That is to say, 50% of 27 gigacalories per hour, it means 13 gigacalories per hour. And we have now our final material balance, heat balance and product qualities. We can see that both pump arounds allowed to extract 20 plus 13 gigacalories per hour, it means 33 gigacalories per hour, which is significant when we put this value in balance with the duties necessary to eat the crude. These pump arounds led to lower the condenser duty by 32 gigacalories per hour, almost exactly the amount of energy recovered in the pump arounds. When we have a look at the liquid flow rate profile in the column, we see that the flow of liquid that leaves the tray above the feed tray is 75 tons an hour. This quantity of liquid comes from the gas coming out of the furnace, which then has been condensed and finally is leaving the tray above the feed tray. So, this amount of liquid can be seen as an extra quantity of gas compared to the total amount of liquid that has been withdrawn from the tower. I mean naphtha, kero, and diesel. We call this flow the overflash. The lower the overflash rate, the less vaporized liquid out of the furnace, the more fuel is saved in the furnace. Just like the pump around, we need to have a minimum overflash flow rate to ensure a certain fractionation efficiency between the heavy diesel and the atmospheric residue zone. 
As we have processed for the selection duty of the pump around, let's try to reduce this overflash. But how to do that? Simply by decreasing the furnace outlet temperature. I repeat that this value was chosen arbitrarily at 385 degrees C in the previous videos. We start from an initial situation with 75 tons per hour overflash and a furnace outlet temperature of 385 degrees C. Let's lower this temperature to 380, for example. When this temperature is lowered by 5 degrees C, the overflash decreases to 68 tons an hour, and all the properties of the products are affected, since, as we can see in the graph, the liquid vapor traffic has been modified in the zones above the feed tray. The kerosene flash point drops by 0.4 degrees C and the cloud point of the diesel increases by 0.1 degrees C. This time, to choose the right amount of overflash, it is typical to compare this overflash flow to the feed throughput. In our case, we are at 68 tons an hour for 500 tons per hour throughput, it means 14%. This value is rather high, since we typically target a value of 3 to 5%. So, let's reduce the furnace outlet temperature from 380 to 365 degrees C. And we see that the overflash rate drops to 45 tons an hour, which is quite correct. We could still reduce the furnace outlet temperature, but for our example, I propose you to stop here. We see that the flash point of kerosene drops by 1.7 degrees C, and the diesel cloud point is increased by almost 1 degree C. Here we are at the end of the heat balance of the column. The installation of pump arounds and the optimization process of the overflash led to a decrease in kerosene flash point by 4 degrees C. Before concluding, I suggest we have a look at the final material balance of the column and compare it to the initial one we have seen in the first video. Remember, in the first video, we showed this diagram with the cuts that we expected to get out of the distillation tower. Here are the final curves. The cut points were modified to target the product qualities. So, the naphtha kerosene cut point has been increased from 150 to 170 degrees C. The kerosene light diesel cut point has been slightly modified from 250 to 245 degrees C. Finally, we see on the graph that the product distillation curves are not as described in the first video. These curves have a much more important slope. The slope of the curves reflects the fact that the distillation column is not a perfect process. In fact, we cannot avoid to elect a portion of naphtha in the kerosene cut, a portion of kero in naphtha cut, kero in the light diesel, light diesel in the kerosene, etc. But, we control these separation efficiencies by adjusting the material balance as well as the heat balance of the column as we saw together. Here we are at the end of the seven videos dedicated to the atmospheric distillation of crude oil. I hope you enjoyed these videos that I tried to make as accessible as possible despite the complexity of the process. We have seen together how to develop the material balance, the heat balance, as well as the energy optimization of the process. Thank you very, very, very much for your attention and see you very soon for more videos. In the meantime, do not hesitate to test your knowledge with the quiz whose link is available in the description of the video. Do not also hesitate to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Refining is Exciting. Bye-bye!